what up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Modi J and we are locked in. This is the recap for episode five of Power Book 2 Ghost. And we have the mid-season finale upon us. And Tariq needs to decide, is he going to be around Diana knowing that she's pregnant and she tried to get his mother unalive? Or is he going to step away and take the James St. Patrick route where him and Tasha decided to go their separate ways? Now, this is the mid-season finale, so we got a couple of months. But before we jump into this recap, if you like Power Book 2, if you like breakdowns, theories, and predictions, tune in tonight for Monday Mistakes, 3 p.m. Eastern. Then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. And I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. We need about 700 people. So if you don't see this at 100 likes, hit that like button and share this with somebody else that enjoys power. But enough talking. Let's jump into it. Just a recap of episode five, Ghost. We pick up right where we left off. Tariq and Anya, they were getting it in. At the end of episode four, we seen them at the bar. They introduced themselves. Well, it turned out they got some drink in and then they got a little bit freaky. Had Tariq passed out on the floor. Now, when he wakes up, Anya's getting dressed. Now, she's not leaving no phone number, no nothing. And Tariq is like, hey, maybe we could do this again. She said, don't get too attached. But she does get Tariq's information because he says they have another party and he wants Anya to show up. And you know how college students are. Once they go to one party and it's pretty dope, pretty legit, they're going to be right back at it. So Tariq is getting there with Anya and she looks like she's going to be around for a while. Hopefully they wore protection because we know Tariq is a father to be. Everyone's getting lucky this episode. And of course, Braden and Elle, they got their little thing going on. And well, in the morning they wake up, she's taking a little bit of medicine and she does a little bit of cocaine. And the reason she does this is because she tells Brayden that she has sickle cell. Now he's never met anyone that has sickle cell and it's more into melanated skin. We have it more than anybody else in the world. So she's saying she just does the cocaina just to you know level her out throughout the day. Now Brayden is telling her, you don't have to hide anything from me. He wants to get close to her. You know, it's been episodes and seasons where Brayden doesn't have a love interest and right now L is someone he's actually interested in. The Tejada bloodline is some of the most interesting we've ever seen in the power universe. They have a cursed dinner table but one thing about this table it breaks the family apart but it brings the family together. Now they make a breakfast and Monet invited all the kids. Now when Kane gets here he's not fooling with Diana and Drew because they tried to unalive Monet. He tried to unalive them and he also knows that Diana is pregnant by Tariq. And he's saying this is probably the worst decision that she can make, especially because Tariq is the reason the whole family has fallen apart. Now, he looks at both of them and is like, I'm not doing anything if Drew and Diana are here. Monet wants him to be a part of her potentially starting the business back up. And she thinks that Diana having a baby will be a fresh start for the whole family. But Kane leaves and he's out. Drew takes it upon himself to finally call Monet out and say this whole family is messed up because of you. You know that, right? You may try to fight us and try to make it seem like you love and care for us and want to bring us back together. But no, we know what's really going on here, Monet. And the way you've been treating us, the way you raised us is why we're so effed up right now. Diana is saying, Drew, no, 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 don't do that. He said, no, she got to hear this because someone finally told Monet what the truth was. Lorenzo tried this a couple of times, but it didn't go too well and Monet got him out of here. So we're gonna see how this plays out. But Drew, he's finally growing a pair and as Kane is his own man, Drew is trying to become his own man. Back at school, Tariq goes to talk to Diana. She's at work. Now they're talking in the hallway, but they gotta be quiet because people keep walking by. Now Tariq is saying, hey, what's going on? And you know, I. I really don't have much to say because you tried to get my mom killed. She's like, I made a mistake. I messed up. The same thing she told Monet in the hotel room, her and Drew made a mistake to try to set her up to have her on alive. So one thing Diana is good at is exposing the truth and then apologizing. But right now she's trying to figure out if she's going to keep the baby or if she's going to get rid of the baby. These are tough decisions. Now Tariq is sitting here listening. He wants to know also because he figures if this is gonna be my child, I gotta to try to start providing for you and the baby. But Diana is unaware and Tariq, he's kind of lost waiting for her decision. Don Carter and his task force, they're piecing everything together. 
They talk to Monet, they talk to Tariq, and they're potentially about to get them to flip on each other. Kamal shows up. Now, Kamal and this guy, Nico, they have been button heads ever since they met. And he's saying, didn't your brother Rashad Tate get you this job? Because they took him off the old task force of Stansfield. So they're going at it. But Don Carter saying, chill, chill, chill. Listen, we're gonna continue to do things my way. You go talk to Tariq, you figure that out and see what information you can get. Kamal is saying, I don't think Tariq is gonna be one that's gonna actually fold. But you can see that something is a little bit different with Don Carter. He's trying to keep Kamal away from the central headquarters. And he already told him, listen, it's my way or the highway. Noma ran into her daughter and Anya had a bag of that cocaina. Now she calls up Effie and says, Effie, how you been selling to my daughter? Cause you're the only one selling on Stansfield, correct? Effie looks at the package and says, that's not mine. I wouldn't sell to your daughter. I wouldn't do nothing silly like that. So Noma is thinking, okay, well, if you're not the one selling on on campus then who is it because you already told us that roman and them were selling we got them out of here so whose product is this and why are they selling to my daughter now effie's confused she's thinking i don't know whose it is i already got set up by Tariq once so i don't know what this is or who's doing it but noma i can guarantee it was not me drew is trying to find his next path in life and he goes to a little art gallery now the lady that comes in here, she notices he's looking at a particular picture and she's saying, we help discover new artists. So Drew was thinking, okay, that's something I'm interested in. Now she sees that his face is a little beat up and she says, I see that you're going through some things. He's like, yeah. So they exchange information and this might be Drew's opportunity to get out of the game. He might actually see the light at the end of the tunnel and now he's gonna be running straight to it because he shows her some of his artwork and she says, yeah, this is actually pretty good. Brayden goes to meet with Zion after they gave Davis his 20%. Now, when they get here, Zion is testing Brayden. He's calling him Tiny Tommy. He's starting to realize there's some stuff that's um, changing up ever since him and Tariq came into their lives. Uh, Roman got jammed up. Their shipment got jammed up. They were working with the Russians, but somehow the Russians they don't have a plug anymore and now you guys are selling all the dope. So he's asking Brayden, who else is out there? Well, Brayden ends up folding and he's saying that there's a woman by the name of Noma that's actually peddling drugs that's really out here doing things. And the reason he gave that information up is because it was him by himself. Now we don't believe in folding, but when you here with no weapons, Brayden gave up all the information and then Zion does some weird hug around him. Tariq had text Anya and told her to show up to this party. Well, Noma's been snooping around and she wants to figure out who sold her daughter dope. She shows up to this party and they run into Tariq. And in the power universe, good things don't last forever. Now Noma comes up and she's like, Tariq, I thought there was a truce. He's like, well, there, there is, we're just throwing parties. He's trying to hold it down. Now Kane, he never believes anything that Tariq is saying. And this time his gut instincts is correct. He's like, nah, let's go ahead and talk outside. So when they get ready to head outside, Anya shows up. So Tariq plays it as, oh, Anya, this is your mom. There's probably some alumni party she can go to. But what Tariq is doing is trying to divide Anya between Noma because Anya doesn't know that Noma is a big time drug dealer. Tariq's plan with Anya exposing Noma, it works and buys a little bit of time. They take Anya and they leave. Now she's telling Kane, we need to watch Tariq but I got to get my daughter out of here. So make sure you follow this young man around because they say that they're not moving any product, but there's no way these parties are going the way they're going unless they're moving something behind my back. So right now, Noma, she's upset because Tariq, she can sense that he's playing her, but her number one priority is making sure her daughter doesn't know that she's actually in the dope game. After this little hiccup, Tariq goes in the back and he's talking to Brayden. Well, he finds out Braden is on them drugs and L shows up and says, hey, you guys ain't got to stop talking. I know everything. So Tariq is looking at Braden like, why would you tell her how the operation is moving? Because if y'all break up, she's going to tell. Now she asks Tariq, what do you think? I'm a snitch. He says, no, you're a junkie. I know you're on that stuff. And Braden and Tariq have a back and forth. And we see that Braden is really, really hurt by Tariq saying this, saying, I can't deal with this on a day to day. I'm not you, Tariq. On top of that, I lost everything helping you out. I lost my family. 
So you got to cut me some slack if I do this. But this is what I do, and I'm here to help out. Now, Tariq is upset because he just got pressed by Noma and Kane. Drew shows up to Monet Made My Steaks, a.k.a. Monday Mistakes, a.k.a. Monet's Bar, that never has any customers. Now, these two have another back and forth. Drew, he's getting a little snappy with Monet. And she's like, remember who you talked to? He's like, listen. I don't want to deal with anything y'all got going on. I'm about to find my own thing to do. Now, Monet comes up with a proposition. She says, listen, Drew, I just need to get me a connect. I just need to get into the game. Now, Drew says, OK, I'll help you out this one time. But after that, I want my cut and I'm out the game completely. So Monet agrees. She says we just need to get some soldiers because remember, Drew knows all of the drops from what Noma was doing when he used to work with her. So he's about to set him up and rob him. The next time we see Tariq, he's having an acid trip and that's because L put acid in his water. Now we know he doesn't smoke or drink, but he was smoking and drinking with Anya. So now he's flipping out. He's imagining himself to be the next James St. Patrick. We see him at Club True in a suit, just like his father had on, but then he's hugging his younger self and he's wondering, is his life gonna turn out the same way? Unalive by his son? Then we see him tripping about him and Diana having a future. We see Lorenzo St. Patrick run up and hug Tariq right before Kane shows up and pow, unalives him. So Tariq is all over the place. Now Brayden, he's worried because he knows Tariq is tripping out and he's trying to talk to him, but Tariq is up under the bed. All of these things are flashing through his mind. Tariq is out of control at this point. That acid got him messed up. Noma's still trying to legitimize her company. She had a talk with Davis. Kane wasn't liking it, but he says, listen, I'll handle everything going on with Zion. You go talk to Wiley. Now, while she's out on this business meeting with Wiley, Zion shows up and he sits down at the table and he tells her this table is reserved for me. This is my city. So anything you're trying to do around here, it needs to go through me. Now, you know, me and you can get a little bit closer and we can kind of negotiate something. But other than that, nothing. Now, Noma, she's kind of caught off guard. She doesn't have her security with her. And Wiley's asking, do you know this gentleman? They're like, nah, we don't know each other. But he tells Noma, listen, this is my city. If you want to do something, it needs to go through me. Now, Kane does say that Zion is a mid-level dealer. But right now, he got the streets on lock. After the meeting with Davis, he lets him know who Zion is. He beat the Rico case for him. Now, Kane knows about the warehouse and he takes Noma down there. Now, there's no security and no guns in here. No weapons allowed, not even Zion. So when they get here, Kane is telling Noma, you're good with me because everyone knows who I am. And the Tejada family, our name holds a little bit of weight. Now, not too much weight, just a little bit of weight. Now, when they get here, they tell Kane, hey, you ain't got no guns or nothing on you, do you? He said, nah, I know the rules. And they had this conversation with Zion before they get in the ring. Kane and Zion, they have their little one off with each other. And Kane says, Noma's with me, so she's good. You know what the Tejada's about. So they get into the ring and they have a fight. 1v1, winner takes all. Well, they get in there and they going at it. We thinking that Zion is just about to one up Kane. Bap, bap, bap. Well, they going at it. Kane starts getting the best of Zion. Mm, put him into the fence. Pow, pow. And out of nowhere, Zion gets some brass knuckles from someone in the crowd. Now we hear the announcer, he's looking and he's like, whoa, 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 because Zion gives Kane a cheap shot to the gut with the brass knuckles and they declare Kane the winner because Zion used brass knuckles. Now Kane is telling Noma, I told you, I got you. He may be a fighter, but I'm a fighter too. And I'll always protect you. Then we finally get the infamous, I gotta become an apex predator speech from Tariq talking to Braden. Because right now, He's telling Braden, man, I ran into Noma. He was like, man, look, I had to give up Noma's name because Zion was questioning. So Tariq is saying, all right, all right, all right. We can put that behind us, but I got to figure out what I'm going to do, Braden. I got to become the apex predator because I got a baby on the way. I got to protect my mom. I got to protect Yaz. I got to do a lot and I need you to be there with me. Now, we know that Braden ain't backing down from nothing. He's always going to be there for Tariq, even though they have their disagreements. Tariq just knows at this point, I need to move a little bit differently. There's pressure coming from every angle. Davis with his cut, Zion was supplying us. Noma and Kane on we doing, Diana pregnant. Tariq, 
It's a lot, but you want to be the next ghost. This is what you got to deal with. Tariq and Diana talk with each other and they finally have a conversation about what they're going to do next. Now, Tariq, he really wants to see where Diana is staying at this. We know he wants to take care of her and the baby if she's going to have it. Now, she does say that somebody gave her advice and said this baby is a blessing and it might be a new start, which was Monet. And then we also know that Kane said this might be the worst decision you ever made. Now, Tariq wants to know, so what is the final decision? And she's saying she's going to keep the baby. And then she asked Tariq, does he want to come to one of her appointments to see the ultrasound? Now, Tariq, we know that he already had the flash out when he was on acid and he thought about what it would be like to have a family. So he's with it. Davis is the man around New York City and he's been trying to get close to Noma. Well, he pulled some strings. He told them about Zion. He told her about Wiley. He gave her information about the police looking into different things. Well, when he shows up to the crib, Noma has a little bit of wine. And remember, she didn't turn Davis down the first time. She said, I'll take a rain check. Meaning, not today, not tomorrow, maybe not next week, maybe in three weeks, maybe in two days. You never know. Well, Davis and Noma, they begin to get it on. Even after Kane fought Zion to defend her honor, she still hooked up with Davis. Now, we see a little bit of weirdness when it comes to Detective Don Carter. He's at home and he's going through the medicine cabinet and we hear him talking to somebody. And we're like, OK, who is he talking to? His wife, Denise, she's unalive. He walks past the room and tells her, don't wait up. He'll be in a little bit later. So we're wondering, is he talking to Denise or is he talking to someone else? But then he kisses her photo on the wall before he leaves out the house. So Don Carter has this mysterious life going on that we're trying to piece together and figure out is Denise dead is he tripping off of meds or what's really going on has he not fully gotten over her being unalived the plan is in effect Monet and Drew got two goons now they all link up Drew and the two goons they try to ambush the people that are delivering stuff for Noma they got the drugs in the back but to the side we see Don Carter so Drew and the two goons get to shooting pow pow they hit in the van. The guys drive off. We got body after body after body dropping. But then Monet comes out of nowhere and she lights the truck up to finish it off. Now, Don Carter, he's here and he fires off a shot and tells everyone to drop their weapons. They even put a gun to Monet's head. So this plan is soiled by Don Carter in the task force. The plot twist that we all been waiting for. Don Carter, actually Dirty Carter. He tells Drew and the crew, listen, what you guys just did here, no one's going to know about. You guys are going to now work for me and I want 35% cut off the top. Don Carter kills the two goons and tells Monet and Drew, you two will both work for me. I don't care who you move drugs, where you move drugs, how, what, no one cares. But as long as you don't get civilians involved and you give me 35% of everything you move then you'll be able to move freely through the city so don carter and the task force they're really extorting all the drug dealers now imagine if they can get 35 percent from every drug dealer don carter is going to be making a lot of money and now monet is back to being a worker diana and Tariq they pull up to the appointment to look at the ultrasound and they're looking at the baby it's little bitty teeny weeny and they're just like, oh, man, this is cool. Well, the doctor leaves and lets these two have a little bit of time together. Now, Diana is asking Tariq the tough questions. Tariq, what are you going to do about this baby? And he's saying, look, my dad tried to shield me away from all this nonsense. And I think if I can get in the dope game and get to be the biggest drug dealer there is, I'll be able to provide for you and the baby. Now, Diana's taking a different route. And she's telling Tariq, no, I don't want you to be in the game. If you're going to be in this baby's life, then you have to be clean and out of the game. She doesn't want the baby to grow up the way that she did. We know what she was doing at five, six years old. She was bagging up dope. So she walks out and this has Tariq wondering and questioning, should he stay in the game or should he get out and be legit like what his father goes, or should I say James was trying to do? All right, there you go. The recap for episode five. Remember that this is the mid season finale. So let me know what you think about this. Is it a good idea for Monet and Drew to continue to work with Don Carter, giving up that 
because we know Drew tried to get some money and get up out of here. And also, is Tariq really going to consider leaving the dope game to be a good father to Diana and Lorenzo St. Patrick? Let me know what you think. I'm Old IJ. If you like this kind of content, break down theories and predictions. Remember, I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out.